Hong Guoliang is coming for the blind date. Yu Mi has always wanted to carry Wang Hongbin to her door, but Yu Qing's does not hide. She and Wang Lianfang do everything in the open, and she dares to talk to Wang Lianfang standing in the alley. That would be meaningless. This woman is too shameless, so small issues cannot humiliate her. But Yu Mi still went. Yu Mi thought, it is always your shortcoming since you cannot give birth to children. I will poke you wherever it hurts you. Yu Mi hugged Wang Hongbin and walked slowly to the door of Yu Qing's house. Many people came with her. Some are unintentional and some are intentional. Their expressions were quite nervous and a little excited. When Yu Qing saw Yu Mi coming, she did not close the door but came out openly. There was no pretending to be calm on her face because she was. She immediately stood there and talked to everyone. Yu Mi didn't look at her. She didn't look at Yu Mi either. Not even a furtive glance at Yu Mi. Yu Mi couldn't help but glance at her secretly. Before Yu Mi opened her mouth, Yu Qing was already talking about Wang Hongbin with others, mainly because of Wang Hongbin's appearance. Yu Qing believed that Wang Hongbin's mouth mainly resembles that of Shi Guifang, and it would be better if he looks like Wang Lianfang. Her praise for Wang Lianfang's mouth was beyond words, but it will get better as he grows up. Yu Qing said that when a boy is young, he looks like his mother, but when he gets older and his bone frame comes out, he still looks like his father. Yu Mi couldn't stand it anymore. Wang Hongbin also has a problem with his ears, a little bit like social drug ears. In fact, Wang Hongbin is not social to others, but Yu Qing herself is a bit social. Yu Mi turned sideways, looked at her, and said rudely to her face, didn't even look in the mirror. Yu Mi's attack was very serious. Any other woman would have been ashamed and would have smiled uglier than crying. But Yu Qing didn't hear it. As soon as the words came out of her mouth, Yu Mi already realized that she had been fooled by this woman, and she was the first to talk to her. Yu Qing still didn't look at her and slowly chatting with others. This time she was talking about Yu Mi, but it seemed like talking about someone else. Yu Qing said, a beautiful girl like Yu Mi is just not forgiving people. Yu Qing did not say beautiful child or beautiful lass, but beautiful girl, which was very elegant. And it sounds like Yu Mi is definitely a golden phoenix flying out of the hen house. She changed the subject and spoke for Yu Mi. She said, if I were Yu Mi, I would also be like this. She said this very seriously. Yu Mi couldn't say anything else. Instead, she felt that she was too powerful to be rational, like a shrew. And she just said that Yu Mi was beautiful, which was already a conclusion. Yu Qing then commented on Yu Xiu's appearance with others. Yu Qing finally said, Still, Yu Mi is good looking. Yu Mi is attractive. The tone was decisive. Yu Mi knew that this was flattering her, but there was no look of flattery on her face, and she didn't even look at her. She was just talking about one thing and another. It seemed to be true. Yu Mi was actually quite happy, but irritating. What Yu Mi couldn't accept the most was the tone of voice this woman. This woman speaks as if she has some kind of power, and what she says can only be what it is and cannot be negotiated. This is so infuriating. Why should she? What kind of rag she is? Yu Mi snuffled and said sarcastically, Beautiful. The tone of her voice ruthlessly attacked the beautiful and gave beautiful infinitely rich and infinitely dirty subtexts. Oh, devastating. After saying this, Yu Mi left. This was somewhat tasteless in the eyes of onlookers. The first confrontation between Yu Mi and Yu Qing actually didn't achieve anything substantial. It was a tie at best. But Yu Mi thought, as time goes by, you're the one who got married anyway. 
you have the handle of Yu Qing's, and your little finger will always be caught in the door frame of Wang Village. Peng Guoliang originally planned to go home to visit relatives during the busy summer season, but his grandfather did not wait until then and died hastily after the beginning of spring. There really is no waiting for anyone on the road to the underworld. After a telegram was delivered, Peng Guoliang's schedule to visit relatives had to be advanced. Peng Guoliang had returned to Peng Village, and there was no news to Yumi. Peng Guoliang was not able to see his grandfather for the last time. When he walked into the house, his grandfather had been dead for the third day. His grandpa was laid to rest, and four days later, after the first seven days were prayed, Peng Guoliang took off his filial piety and sent words that he would come for a blind date. Yu Mi was very unprepared. She couldn't blame him for this matter. Peng Guoliang's return at this time was originally an accident. The problem was Yu Mi didn't have any suitable clothes. Yu Mi planned to wear the new Chinese New Year clothes and try them on. It was a jacket added to a cotton padded jacket. It was one size larger and hung on the body. It looked a little crazy and silly, and it was very ugly. If making a new one, she would have to go to town to get materials. It's too late anyway. Yumi was very melancholy and depressed. She always wanted to cry, but in the end, she was happy and she never cried. This makes her even more depressing.